How do we reduce our energy consumption? What must we do over the next 20, 30 or 40 years to keep climate change under control? Two questions that all citizens are entitled to ask. Il faudra juste adapter sa maison avec, euh, enfin, comment dire, avec le futur. Donc, euh, on a fait ça à chaque fois, c'est l'évolution. Ça va peut-être changer euh, ma vie parce que je prendrai moins ma voiture. Il faudrait euh, restructurer le réseau de distribution et de transport. Si on décide de réglementer tout ce qui est le transport routier, ça va faire perdre des, des millions d'emplois. Mais ça peut en créer aussi euh, énormément. The European Commission has just brought out a roadmap setting out a strategy to cut most of Europe's greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. It's a roadmap to what's called the low-carbon economy. The aim? To fight climate change while conserving the best possible quality of life for the future. The two are compatible if we decrease energy consumption and reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 80% over the next 40 years. There are many things with known technologies where we can still, if we start now, actually still have a good life, just a more intelligent life. It's not a life where it's grey and you cannot do this and you must not eat this and everything is prohibited. If we start now, we can make a smooth transition. The transition has been underway since the 1970s. Before the oil crisis, people did not think about how much fuel their cars consumed. Domestic energy consumption was supplied by oil or coal-fired power stations and houses were badly insulated or not at all. The consumption of fossil fuels was at its peak and saving energy was not on the agenda. Today, we've come a long way. Sensitized to the threat of worsening climate change, Europeans are buying more efficient cars, including hybrid vehicles. They are concerned about reducing their traditional energy consumption in favor of renewable energies. These already account for 15% of energy consumption. Many things still have to change to reach the 2050 targets. But what will our daily lives look like in 40 years? We'll reduce our energy consumption even further, but we'll use more electricity for transport and heating. And our electricity will be 100% renewable or low in carbon emissions. Well, about half of what we have to do, we can do through energy efficiency. Just being much more careful with the way we use energy. And that, of course, will save us money. Insulate our buildings uh, much better is a very powerful example of energy efficiency. Europeans are already concerned about reducing their energy consumption. Passive houses, much better insulated, are springing up all over Europe. Well before 2050, eco-districts like this one in Belgium will be far more numerous. Ce projet-ci voudrait démontrer que la maison passive n'est pas uniquement une maison pour riches et qu'elle est accessible à, elle pourrait être accessible à tout le monde et donc qu'il ne faut pas euh, s'interdire cette exigence euh, énergétique euh, d'être responsable un peu pour l'avenir de la planète en se disant c'est plus cher, c'est pas pour moi. By building 20 houses at once, the developers were able to lower the prices to the same level as those of traditional houses. The big advantage is that passive houses need up to 90% less heating. Pour être très 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 concret, on a reçu la première facture globale d'électricité qui équivalait un tout petit peu inférieure à la facture d'électricité qu'on avait dans la maison d'avant. La seule chose, c'est qu'on n'a pas frais de gaz. The city of 2050 is just around the corner in Denmark. At first sight, Frederikshavn looks like any other European city. The difference is that it already has an energy plan to reduce CO2 emissions. In four years' time, it aims to be the first city in the world that's 100% green. We have decided that we shall not pay bigger taxes or bigger taxes for the person who can do this. Can work. One key aim of the project is to improve the energy efficiency of the houses. Here, most of the housing was built in the 60s and 70s, and so it's poorly insulated. Renovation is needed. And at low cost, owners are motivated to have the work done. Such a villa here, it costs typically 12,000 kroner to isolate, and the expenditure is to be able to live in two and a half years for such people here. And simultaneously, they save 1,2 tons of CO2 emissions for this process. The renovation of the houses offers another advantage, job creation at local level. This year alone, that will mean 300 new jobs, a godsend for the workers of Frederikshaven, hard hit by the closure of naval shipyards. 
vores reelle læring og vores reelle ambition er, og det er det, der lykkes, det er, nej, at lukke gammel virksomhed er ikke en katastrofe, når man tænker sig om at få skabt nye jobs i den grønne verden. Og der er masser af nye jobs i den grønne verden. The second initiative of the project is to supply the city with renewable energy. Frederikshavn is already anticipating the modus operandi of 2050 by linking several energy sources. Wind turbines and solar panels for electricity, solar heat for the central water heating system, biofuel for transport. Jeg, jeg tror, at i fremtiden, der, der, det, det vil være mange år, før man får tung trafik over på elektricitet. Så, så derfor er man nødt til at køre, køre, have en, en anden øh, vedvarende energiform. Og, og der, der er biogassen altså rigtig, rigtig god til den tunge transport. The car of 2050 already exists. It's electric, but it has the inconvenience of a limited range of use. But that will improve over the coming decades. Wenn wir einen Strahl, einen Zeitstrahl in die Zukunft wählen, dann wird man in den nächsten 30, 40 Jahren sicherlich die Reichweite verdoppeln, den Energieinhalt verdoppeln, die Kosten mindestens um den Faktor 3 senken und Fahrzeuge in den Markt bringen, die auf die Elektromobilität zugeschnitten sind. Having more electric cars on the road powered by clean electricity will also be better for our health. If we had in Brussels or in Copenhagen, or in Berlin. In more electrical cars, we would have less air pollution, less, a fewer number of children would get asthma, lung problems, fewer would be, have to, to stay at home from work because they are feeling sick, and so on and so forth. So there are some co-benefits coming with an intelligent way of moving into a low-carbon society. The European Commission is encouraging Europe's member states to create their own national roadmaps. By moving to a low-carbon society, Europe is seizing opportunities for new growth and new jobs.